Hey guys, listening to the English Made Simple show. This is episode number 216, number 216, numero 216. Welcome, amigos y amigas. Welcome to this episode of the English Made Simple show. My name is Milena and I'm the host of the English Made Simple show. And guess what? It took me three weeks to get over my flu. Uh, actually, it's not over yet. I still get a tickle in my throat and then I start to cough like this. <laughs> you know, cough. Um, and I do have an embarrassing story to share about this. And it's kind of a recent experience. Very, very recent. It happened yesterday in a restaurant. But more on that later. First off, amigos y amigas, today's episode is about how, how to keep a conversation going with somebody. How do you carry on a conversation with someone even if you think you have nothing to say? <laughs> how do you continue a conversation with somebody? Hmm. These are all great questions, amigos y amigas. Great questions indeed. I get a lot of messages from listeners who say that they feel a bit stressed when they are unable to follow conversation with someone in English um, and they feel a bit awkward and confused whether there's something they couldn't understand during the conversation or if it's something else. And I know this feeling all too well. Uh, been there, done that. <laughs> I used to be in your shoes, amigos y amigas, used to be there 20 years ago or maybe 25 years ago now, I stopped the count. Uh, I know what happens at the moment, at that very moment, when you are having a conversation with someone in English and you really wanted to have uh, a really nice flowing conversation, but for some reason you couldn't have a flowing conversation. So one of the few things might happen during the conversation when you are actually in the conversation with somebody. Uh, so one of the things, uh, for example, is... You make assumptions that the person doesn't really understand you. So imagine you're talking with somebody and the, that somebody is listening to you, but you think they are not understanding you. It's just all in your head. And then number two, a voice in your head says, that's wrong. What you said is wrong. You should have said this. This all happens during the conversation, during uh, the actual speaking. Okay. I know what happens because I was there before. Uh, or what could happen when you are in the conversation with someone is your voice is not loud enough. You're almost whispering, maybe because you're a bit um, shy, maybe a bit embarrassed to be speaking. Uh, so you're almost whispering and the whis whispering is kind of like quiet voice, like, like whispering to somebody, um, whispering a secret to someone, you know. So this is what normally happens right when you're when you're not confident when you're speaking with somebody your voice is not loud enough and the other person keeps saying to you sorry can you please repeat that so you keep hearing this from someone else sorry can you please repeat that at that moment this uh, kind of trips you and it trips you confuses you because you think that when they said that sorry can you please repeat that You think that they couldn't understand you because of what you said or they couldn't understand your pronunciation where in fact it's actually the tone of your voice. Maybe it's too quiet for the other person to hear you. Okay? I know this happened to me when I was learning Spanish and my husband used to tell me, speak up Milena, speak up, nobody can hear you. But I'm too shy to say, quiero un café por favor. <laughs> Not shy anymore. All right. Does this all sound familiar to you, amigos y amigas? Is this what you are going through when you are having a conversation with someone in English? Hmm? Yes. As I said, been there, done that. By the way, just to make you feel a little bit better, when you are speaking with native speakers, when you have a conversation with native speakers, they don't mind the mistakes. Even if you do make a mistake, they don't actually mind it. They will not correct you unless it's something huge uh, and it needs correcting. They will kind of let it slide. They will not. Uh, they will not mind it at all. So just keep talking. Keep talking. Don't be shy. So please, when you speak with somebody, 
take every chance to project your voice. Speak a bit louder and clearer, okay? And if you need to speak a bit slower. All right, now, amigos y amigas, on to the fun part. Here are three simple ways to keep a conversation going. And that's the theme of today. Keep the conversation going. Step number one. Here's the phrase for you, amigos y amigas. Oh, that's interesting. Tell me more. <laughs> you can use this one when you don't feel like talking too much, okay? You want to have a break from speaking, from talking. Um, but you really want to encourage the other person to keep going. Let them speak longer. Gives you time to rest, uh, take a break from speaking. I'll give you an example. Alicia and Carlos are chatting. Okay, they're just having a conversation. Carlos says, so yeah, Alicia, I just came back from a holiday in Siberia and I can say it was pretty cold over there. And Alicia says, oh, that's interesting, Carlos. Please tell me more about your trip to Siberia. I don't actually know how good this example was. How many people take holidays in the freezing and cold Siberia? Okay, right. Next phrase you should know and hopefully start practicing is phrase number two. Oh, that's interesting. I've never heard of that. Let's use the same example. Carlos was in Siberia. He was there on holiday. He took the Trans-Siberian Express from Siberia to Moscow. Okay, guys, I honestly, by the way, I honestly don't know where I got this example from. It just popped into my head as I was recording this episode. Now, before Alicia could even say that she couldn't really care about Carlos's adventure, <laughs> she said, oh, that's interesting. I've never heard of that before. Hmm, all right. Is that a good example? Maybe it's a bad example. However, you can still use this variation, um, which was, oh, that's interesting. I've never heard of that before. And that, again, encourages the other person to keep talking. That's interesting. Please tell me more about the trip. That was the other phrase that you should um, also incorporate. And, of course, you should uh, sound genuinely interested, okay? My example was a bit exaggerated. So you should show it that you are interested in knowing more about this experience. And now the grand finale, step number three or phase number three. Now, if you find yourself to be, you know, in a chatty mood, you like to chat, you feel like chatting, uh, talking with people, then share something personal about yourself. And I mean things like if you have some funny stories to share, uh, like me, I always have a funny story to share. Or if you have seen a movie on Netflix, um, you can share a story about that. Um, I can share a story with you now uh, how I haven't seen a great movie on Netflix in a long time. And what's happening with all the Marvel series? Netflix keeps teasing us with those, introduces a series like Daredevil, and then cancels it. Right, okay. So, you see, there was an example of, you know, starting something, a conversation about Netflix and what's happening with Netflix. Okay, now, what about this recent story that uh, happened to me, like yesterday, when I went out? Um, what was I doing? So, that example, my husband and I went out celebrating our three-year wedding anniversary, and we found an Argentinian restaurant in Adelaide. Yay! <laughs> and as you already know, I am recovering from my flu. It's almost gone. Um, you will notice from my last episodes, like last couple of episodes, that I had a really bad cough for two weeks. Um, and it only started to get better today. Uh, what is a cough, uh, some of you might say? Cough, uh, spelled as C-O-U-G-H. C-O-U-G-H, five letters, three sounds, cough. That's when you are sick, okay? When you are sick, you have the flu, and you start to cough like, <coughs> like that. All right, that's cough, uh, coughing sound. So my husband and I, we were out yesterday celebrating, and we were eating together, and all of a sudden, I get a cough attack, okay? One of those coughing episodes that doesn't stop. The cough doesn't stop at all. I was coughing for five minutes and it didn't sound too good at all. It didn't look too well either. <laughs> my husband was already embarrassed. But anyway, I told my husband, I'm so lucky we are married because now you're stuck with me. <laughs> you can't escape. 
and my husband says, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. Just joking. <laughs> muy interesante. Muy interesante. All right. <laughs> uh, I'll give you another bonus uh, step or a bonus phrase. Well, it's not a phrase, actually. It's just uh, something to consider. And that is... When you're out of topics to talk about during uh, having a conversation with somebody, uh, you should start complaining. You should start complaining. Uh, my husband gave me this idea because I seem to complain about a lot of things. Like Netflix. What happened to Netflix? Uh, of course, uh, don't make it all negative. You don't want to sound too negative in a conversation when you're talking with somebody. That would be a really dull conversation. Unless you can make up a really good story about being negative and complaining. That would be more interesting. Okay, we might talk about this in the next episode. I have already given you a lot of value in this episode. A lot of phrases for you to think about. Uh, so I hope this was helpful to you, amigos y amigas. You've been amazing so far. And now if you have any other hmm, tips or clever tricks that you use uh, to help you with a flowing conversation, to help a conversation flow... Please let me know, share it with me, and I will share it with the rest of the amigos, uh, rest of the community. Awesome. Thanks for joining me today, amigos and amigas. Hope you have an awesome week. You've been an amazing audience, as always. And you've been jamming with Milena from English Made Simple. <coughs> <coughs> here, here we go, coughing again. You've been jamming with Milena from English Made Simple. Have an awesome rest of the week. Until next time. Hasta la próxima. Very interesting. Please tell me more. Now cut this cheese, please.